Hi friends, today I am going to go through the various issues and solutions for building ultra high performance OpenXML DocX generation applications. Some scenarios require an extreme level of performance. Consider insurance companies or banks who might need to generate literally a hundred thousand statements in a given statement run, maybe more, maybe half a million statements on a given day. They've written an OpenXML program that generates very nicely formatted statements. It reads information from their database. It generates the OpenXML documents so that the statements look exactly as they want them to. And then they use one of the various varieties of ways where you can print those OpenXML documents to a ultra high speed printer or in some cases maybe they simply just convert to PDF and send the PDFs through email. There are a lot of scenarios but in the meantime they need to as a first step generate literally hundreds of thousands of documents. If you've ever built a high performance OpenXML document generation application and you've run it single threaded, you can see that we are basically CPU bound. If you run this on a four core machine, you'll see that the CPU usage is about 25%. If we take a simple multi-threaded approach, perhaps we just spawn off different threads and do OpenXML generation in each of the threads, we'll start seeing object disposed exceptions or null reference exceptions from system.io.packaging. So the question is why do we get these exceptions? This was also the subject of a previous screencast that I did on building open XML applications where you need to build these from a multi-threaded application like a web server front end. The OpenXML SDK uses system.io.packaging and that in turn, if its memory usage goes above 10 megabytes, starts to use some classes in the isolated storage namespace. Isolated storage uses a secret directory. This name is based on the strong name of the assembly. What I mean to say by this is that for a given assembly with a given strong name, it will use a particular directory in isolated storage. However, if two threads or two executables with the same strong name attempt to use isolated storage, well, the way it works out is that executable one starts up, puts content in this secret directory, and then executable starts up and also uses that same secret directory. And then executable one finishes and does stuff to that secret directory such that executable two fairly randomly will throw an object disposed exception or a null reference exception. The symptoms of these exceptions is they're thrown from deep inside system.io.packaging. So what do we do? First of all, we're going to put all of the open XML processing in separate executables. We can call these demons. They're processes that run. They're not there to serve human beings. They're there to serve other computer programs. And we're going to take an approach where we are going to give each one of these executables its own strong name. This means that each one of these executables will get its own secret directory in isolated storage if and when it ever needs to access isolated storage. We're going to build a controller program that uses MSMQ to communicate to these various daemons. And last, just because we can, we're going to use a RAM disk to get as high performance as possible. 
So let's take a quick look at how this is going to look visually. So we'll have four demons start because we're running this on a four processor machine so it makes sense to have four demons running. We'll have this controller sitting over here and the first thing that the controller does when it starts up is it sends a ping to each one of these demons. The demons in turn send a message back to the controller saying, yes, I'm here and I'm ready to do your bidding. The controller then asks each one of these demons to generate documents. It gives information to each one of these demons about which documents to generate. After the demon is done doing its processing, it sends a message back telling the controller it's done. When the controller receives that document generation complete message, it knows that it can turn around and ask that same demon to generate more documents. Each one of these demons is just a single threaded executable, so this means that there won't be any issues associated with isolated storage. So let's take a look at this in action. Here we're looking at remote desktop connections into two separate physical machines. This machine over here on the right, this is the machine that's going to run the controller. When we look at this high performance docx generation.cs program, up at the top here we can see we have some configuration information one thing that it has here is the machine name of the machine that's going to host all of the demons. We have a value here that says how many demons are we going to run on this particular machine. If we had a 8-core processor or a 12-core processor, we'd certainly want to bump up the number of demons at least to the number of processors. Incidentally, I see that sometimes I get a very little bit more performance if I set this number of demons to one more than the number of physical cores. I think it just makes the operating system take advantage of little bits of downtime to continue to do things when the other demons can't be processing, but it doesn't give us much, so I just set the number of demons to four. That's the number of physical CPUs that are on that machine. There are several queues of interest here. There's one queue on the controller, and this is the queue that each one of the demons talks to. There's only one queue in MSMQ on that controller, and there's only one queue for each of the demons on the machine that's going to run all of the demons. So in this particular case, we have five queues. We have one on the controller and four one on each of the demons. We have some initialized variables here, one to specify where the template document is and the other to specify where to put all of the generated documents. And this generated documents directory, it's in a directory that has been shared so that both the controller and each of the demons can see and access and write to that directory. When you need to configure this for running this on your own set of computers, you only need to change information from this point and above. Everything else below this is parameterized out so that you don't need to actually change that. Now let's look over here at the daemon. This is the source code for just the first of the demons. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So I have a number here, generator number, and for each of the demons, this is going to be a different number. It'll be 1, 2, and 3, and 4. And there's also a machine name for the controller. So if you are going to run this sample application on your own machines, you'll need to change this name, iWin, which is the name of the machine that has the controller. If you are putting this together for yourself, if you're going to run this application, you only need to change this controller machine name in the daemon code. 
And there's the code down here that implements the algorithm that I walked through in that PowerPoint slide. It sends messages back and forth, and it does document generation, and it places the documents in the appropriate place, and so on. Now we're going to get to see the secret sauce. Here in the directory that contains the hyperf docx generation daemon.cs file, there's also a PowerShell script right here. Let's take a look at that PowerShell script. I'm going to expand this window a little bit so we can just see it a little bit better. Up at the top of this PowerShell script, again, we set the number of daemons. And what it does for each one of these daemons is it creates a new version of the hyperf docx generation daemon.cs, one for each of the daemons, of the four daemons, and then it goes in and it modifies the code of this new version so that we have daemon number one, daemon number two, daemon number three, and daemon number four. This code up here, that's just code what I used when I'm debugging, that when I make changes, I need to go and clean up ahead of time. So getting down here, this is the real meat of the stuff. Right here, it, it uses the get content commandlet in PowerShell to get that high performance docx generation daemon.cs, and it does a transform where it replaces this string static int generator number equals one with static int generator number equals dollar i, and that means it'll be one, two, three, and four for each of the four demons. And it also gets the properties slash assembly info dot cs, and it replaces the name of the assembly with hyperf docx generation daemon one, hyperf docx generation daemon two, etc so that each one of them has a different name in the assembly info. And further, it makes each one of them have a different version number. Instead of having a version number of 1.0.0.0, the first daemon has a version number of 1.0.0.1. The second has a version number of 1.0.0.2, and so on. The next line down here actually uses CSC and it compiles it. I've put together this PowerShell script so that you don't have to set up any environment variables or anything. If you just get a PowerShell command window and you go to that directory and run the PowerShell script, it should work for you. If you are running on a 32-bit machine, you'll need to change the path to the open XML DLL. It, it doesn't need this x86 here in the path for program files. If you are using a different version of the .NET framework, you'll have to change some directories as appropriate also. And then after it compiles each one of those daemons, this PowerShell script iterates through them and starts them up. And it starts them up with a window style of normal so that we can see what's going on with them. There's a little bit of code to print out the number of documents generated in each daemon every 10 documents. So that way we can see that these daemons are, in fact, doing their work. So let's run this PowerShell script. And that's how quickly it goes. And we've got our four daemons running here. I have a little bit of code in there to make these console windows narrow so that we can see all of them easily. Good enough. Before we run the controller, I want to just show you a couple of things. First of all, we're going to look at the hyperf docx generation daemon assembly info one. If I drag and drop this on notepad plus plus we can see up here we have hyperf docx generation daemon one as the assembly title and as the assembly product and if we drop down 
Here we can see it has version 1.0.0.1, and the remainder will have similar modifications to them. And also, if we look in Hyperf Docx Generation Daemon 4.cs, we can see up here this has generator number equals four. We need that number so that we can give unique names to each of the MSMQ queues that this particular daemon will use. So we can also go look at the information about this exe. If I go to the properties of that exe and I go to details, we can see, in fact, the file description is Hyperf docx generation daemon 4, and the file version and product version are 1.0.0.4. So that is all as we expect it to be. Okay, so here we have those four demons. I'm going to shrink down this window. Okay, so there we have the four demons, and I've shrunk down that window so that we can see stuff over here in this window too. So I'm now going to run the controller. Now one of the things that the controller does is it tracks how much elapsed time there's been since starting the controller and since starting generating documents and it displays a constant number of documents per minute that we're generating based on how many documents each one of these demons generates. So I'll press F5 over here, and the controller does a little bit of work, and there we can see each one of those demons madly working away, and we're getting 23,659, now 24,000 documents per minute. Now we're generating those on this big I5-8 machine, and that is not actually a terribly powerful machine. It's a core i5 quad core and it's 3.4 gigahertz I think is what its speed is. So it's kind of a fairly run-of-the-mill machine and we're getting the capability of generating 24,000 and change documents per minute. This is set up to generate 30,000 documents so we're going to be done here in just a minute. Less than a minute, actually. And now it's done. And if we come over here and look at this generated documents directory, we can see that there are 30,000 items in that directory. Each one of those is a valid docx that was custom generated from data fed to it by the controller. So there we have it. We have created a document generation system that generates 24,000 and change documents per minute. There are certainly opportunities to speed this up. If I wanted to, I could go into that C-sharp code that I have for that application. I could probably cut the operation time in half if I really wanted to. If it were important to generate even greater number, I could actually write that OpenXML application in C or C++. It's certainly possible. Many people do that, and you can get just amazing performance if you do that. But 24,000 documents per minute will meet the needs of most high-performance users of OpenXML and the OpenXML SDK. One last note, it almost goes without saying that you could actually scale this out to multiple machines. You'd have to enhance the message queue infrastructure a little bit and parameterize it so that the controller could talk to message queues on multiple machines and each one of those multiple machines would have to know to talk back to that one controller. And of course, in a real world scenario, you'll probably want to customize that quite a bit for your particular needs. I'm more interested in giving you a proof of concept and a general direction to go for building ultra high performance document generation systems. Thanks for watching. See you next time.